Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. December 16th, 1937, Dialogue 429. A few ladies had come from Bangalore. One among them asked, The world is composed of differences from our point of view. How shall we be able to get over these differences and comprehend the one essence of all things. Sri Bhagavan replied, The differences are the result of the sense of doership, Katritva. The fruits will be destroyed if the root is destroyed. So relinquish the sense of doership. The differences will vanish and the essential reality will reveal itself. In order to give up the sense of doership, one must seek to find out who the doer is. Inquire within. The sense of doership will vanish. Vichara, inquiry, is the method. Inquiry is the method. How else would one arrive at self-knowledge except by profound inquiry? And without self-knowledge, how could there be self-realization? She asked, the world is composed of differences from our point of view. How shall we be able to get over these differences and comprehend the one essence of all things? If it's our point of view that perceives the world composed of differences, What needs to be done is to relinquish the point of view. Relinquishment of the point of view always depends on what you regard as your identity.
Bhagavan said, the differences are the result of the sense of doership. Why does he mention doership? It is in relation to the activities of body, speech, and mind. The doership can be said to operate. That is, the false assumption of individuality appears with these as its guises, as the doer or the performer of action, the actor, the speaker, the thinker, etc. The fruits will be destroyed if the root is destroyed. The root is the concept of I. Combined with activity, it appears as the doer, as just explained. From that position, one thinks he experiences a differentiated world. This last thing is regarded as the fruit. The I notion is the root. By directly inquiring into the root, the entirety of the illusion is abandoned. It dissolves. So relinquish the sense of doership. <clears throat> you are not the one that does something with the body, the speech, and the mind. A performer of activities is not your true identity. If you approach in this manner, then, he says, the differences will vanish. <clears throat> differences perceived depend on misidentification. They depend on the notion, I. So if you relinquish the sense of doership, as thus understood, the differences will vanish. What remains is the essential reality, which will reveal itself. She had asked about the comprehension of the one essence of all things. Sri Bhagavan reveals that reality will reveal itself as soon as the differentiation vanishes, that is, as soon as the misidentification subsides. The reality, which is of the nature of consciousness, reveals itself to itself. This is self-knowledge.
The inquiry may have commenced with abandonment of the false notion of doership, but it concludes with the disappearance of any notion of I, even a realizer, entirely. He said, in order to give up the sense of doership, one must seek to find out who the doer is. What is it that is supposedly a doer or performer of activity? Inquire within. You must discern in a non-objective manner the true nature of your being. Inquire within. The sense of doership will vanish. And with it all the false differentiation. What remains is one self. Transcendent of things, transcendent of activity, transcendent of all. How is this accomplished? He says, vichara, inquiry, is the method. December 22nd, 1937. A Marathi gentleman asked, I have read much about self-realization. I do japa, puja, etc. Nothing seems to satisfy me. Can Sri Bhagavan kindly guide me? The Maharshi responds, What is that you seek to gain? Everyone seeks happiness. Happiness is one's lot in everyday sleep. Bring about that state of happiness even in the waking state. That is all. The disciple said, I do not follow. How is it to be done? Sri Bhagavan replies, Atma Vichara is the way. The disciple said, It seems too difficult to adopt, being so intangible. What shall I do if I feel unfit for this method of inquiry? The Maharshi answers, Guidance is there. It is for individuals to avail themselves of it. What is that which you seek to gain?
What is it that you have actually always sought? in worldly ways, in spiritual ways. What is it that you seek to gain? Is it not a profound happiness, a perfectly full happiness, a happiness that never comes to an end. He says, everyone seeks happiness. There can be no denial of this. If only one knew the nature of happiness, if only one knew the nature of himself, then what is sought would be found to be fully present, perfectly so. Happiness is one's lot in everyday sleep. That is, in deep dreamless sleep. There is happiness. Uncaused, non-dependent happiness. It is not connected with the senses, with their pleasures and pains. It is not connected with modes of mind composed of thought. The happiness is inherent in oneself. So, Sri Bhagavan said, bring about that state of happiness, even in the waking state. That is all. The existence that was during deep sleep exists now in the waking state as well. It is unchanged, unmodified, for such is its very nature. With whatever you have identified yourself newly in the waking state, liberate yourself from by inquiring. It is a matter of knowledge. Interior spiritual knowledge. The unformed, unbound existence beyond thought that shines in deep, dreamless sleep is the same now and is you. Discriminate discerning what has been newly added to it, 
Additions are illusory. Without them, you are happy. You are happiness. Knowledge of the self alone is needed. For happiness, for the wisdom of knowing reality as it is, for this reason he said, that is all. The questioner had then said, it seems too difficult to adopt, being so intangible. His perception of difficulty is from the non-inquiring state, from the position of not inquiring, there is a difficulty. There is intangibility. From the position of actually engaging in inquiry, there is no such difficulty. Not only is it not too difficult to adopt the method of inquiry, it is indeed quite natural. Because of this viewpoint of the questioner, he more or less asks for another method rather than inquiry. Sri Bhagavan puts him in the right direction, though again, the emphasis upon inquiry, telling him guidance is there. It is for individuals to avail themselves of it. Think about it. Do the gentlemen travel some distance you know, to go to the ashram to speak with Sri Bhagavan to ignore the instruction given? Guidance is there. It is for the seeker to, to discern it, to dwell in it, to follow the instruction. This guidance was then and is now also. It is for individuals to avail themselves of it.
December 25th, 1937. A Telugu gentleman stood up and asked, The mind is said to be pure when all its vasanas are wiped out. It is also the finality. When there is something to be gained, is it not duality? Sri Bhagavan replies, Let the mind be first made pure. If the same question arises thereafter, the answer may then be sought. The questioner had to find purity of mind um, by saying it was the elimination or destruction of all asanas, all tendencies. He himself had mentioned that it was also the finality. So purity of mind is what is desirable purity being defined as an absence of vasanas with finality. It means the irreversible destruction of ignorance. Then he asks, if there's something to be gained, is it not duality? Such as attaining a state in which vasanas are wiped out. Would that be duality? Sri Bhagavan redirects him toward keeping his practice experiential and not theorizing about what is dual and non dual saying, let the mind be first made pure. First have a mind that's devoid of asanas, permanently, because he said in finality. Then see if the question about duality still arises. If the same question arises thereafter, the answer may then be sought. It's interesting because the first half he talks about the, what's deep, true, and then he has some sort of doubt, but that doubt is more theoretical and not... <clears throat> and this is what I'm kind of reading into it and not uh, pertaining to a spiritual practice. How to deepen it. To... That's correct. If you would do as he said, which is first make your mind devoid of asanas, then how would those questions arise? I do that so I can relate to this question. <laughs> You know, it's like the mind will dream up whatever stories, you know, theories. And not this exact thing, but instead of inquiry.
why look for something instead of inquiry? One leads to suffering. Yeah, you're looking for happiness, as pointed out in the previous dialogue. Yeah, in the wrong direction. So he had said the inquiry is the method. It reveals the happiness of being. The true nature of being is revealed as soon as all the vasanas have come to an end. They come to an end only by inquiring, who am I? Then there is happiness without end as existence does not cease to exist. There's also here the, it's sort of implied without him saying so, that somehow the mind is separate from himself and comes up with these things, these ideas, but actually he hasn't seen that he himself is producing them. And so if he just would turn his attention to the inquiry, they would fade away without his presenting them. The inquiry is always the best way to deal with those. Then there's a very good lesson in this, isn't it? Yes. December 26th, 1937. An Andhra visitor asked, What is sleep? The Maharshi replies, Why? You experience it every day. The disciple said, I want to know exactly what it is so that it may be distinguished from samadhi. Sri Bhagavan replies, How can you know sleep when you are awake? The answer is to go to sleep and find out what it is. The disciple said, but I cannot know it in this way. The Maharshi replied, this question must be raised in sleep. The disciple said, but I cannot raise the question then. Sri Bhagavan replied, so that is sleep. Sri Bhagavan went out for a few minutes. On his return, the same man asked, self-realized jnanis are seen to take food and do actions like others. Do they similarly experience the states of dream and of sleep? Sri Bhagavan replies, Why do you seek to know the state of others, maybe jnanis? What do you gain by knowing about others? You must seek to know your own real nature. Who do you think that you are? Evidently, the body. The disciple said, yes. Sri Bhagavan replied, 
Similarly, you take the jnani to be the visible body whereon the actions are superimposed by you. That makes you put these questions. The jnani himself does not ask if he has the dream or sleep state. He has no doubts himself. The doubts are in you. This must convince you of your wrong prem premises. The jnani is not the body. He is the self of all. The sleep, dream, samadhi, etc. are all states of the ajnanis. The self is free from all these. Here is the answer for the former question also. The disciple said, I sought to know the state of sthita pranyana unshaken knowledge. Amar, she replies, the Shastras are not for the jnani. He has no doubts to be cleared. The riddles are, the riddles are for the jnanis only. The Shastras are for them alone. The disciple said, sleep is the state of nescience. And so it is said of samadhi also. Sri Bhagavan replied, Jnana is beyond knowledge and nescience. There can be no questions about that state. It is the self. The dialogue began with the question, what is sleep? And Sri Bhagavan, perhaps pointing out the all too obvious, says, why? Why ask this question? You experience it every day. How can there be a question about something that is first-hand experience? The disciple then said, I want to know exactly what it is so that it may be distinguished from samadhi. From this question, we can discern that he's neither asleep nor in samadhi now while asking the question. Sri Bhagavan instructs, how can you know sleep when you are awake? The answer is to go to sleep and find out what it is. Otherwise, you would just be forming waking state notions about a state, sleep, in which the notions are absent. How would real knowledge ever dawn that way? So he answers him, perhaps somewhat humorously, the answer is to go to sleep and find out what it is. The disciple complained that he could not know it in this way. Sri Bhagavan was insistent, saying, this question must be raised in sleep. The disciple objected, saying, but I cannot raise the question then, meaning in sleep you can't raise the question. 
Sri Bhagavan replies, so that is sleep. Sleep is a state in which the question can arise. The next question when Sri Bhagavan re-entered the hall was, self-realized jnanis are seen to take food and do actions like others. Do they similarly experience the states of dream and of sleep? In the question, he has superimposed the body and the mind upon the jnani, who has no such misidentification whatsoever. If his attempt is to know what the state of a realized being is, how will he do so by putting forth this various superimposed notion? He's defining the jnani by what he is not. How could there possibly be a clear understanding in that manner? Sri Bhagavan instructs, Why do you seek to know the state of others, maybe jnanis? What do you gain by knowing about others? Forming concepts about others is not nearly as good as knowing oneself. You must seek to know your own real nature. Who do you think that you are? Evidently the body. To which the disciple agreed, saying yes. Sri Bhagavan continued, saying, Similarly, you take the jnani to be the visible body, whereon the actions are superimposed by you. That makes you put these questions. The jnani himself does not ask if he has the dream or sleep state. For the jnani's vision, there are no three states, waking, dreaming, and sleep. Seeing a body in a certain manner, one supposes that there is a mind. Seeing the body move in certain ways, one thinks the actions define. The jnani knows better. Remaining transcendent of the body and the mind, inclusive of all its states. He has no doubts himself. Because his being, his very existence, is his knowledge. He is not an embodied individual who knows about the self. He is the self. The jnani is not the body. He is the self of all. the very existence of all, is his only definition.
This must convince you of your wrong premises. The question that he raised originated from lack of knowledge of himself. And then he superimposed the same limiting adjuncts on the jnani, say, Sri Bhagavan. But it's truthful to say, Vinyani does not eat, does not do, does not dream, does not sleep, does not wake. None of such apply. He is only the self of all, Brahman. The sleep, dream, and samadhi, etc., are all states of the ajnanis. The self is free from all these. The self does not sleep, the self does not dream. In the self, how is samadhi possible? Apart from the self, how is samadhi possible? Unself alone exists, free from all these. Here is the answer for the former question also, the question about sleep. The disciple had then stated that he sought to know the state of stita, stita pranyata, unshaken knowledge, abidance in firmly in knowledge. This is evidently something he had read about, but was not his actual experience. Sri Bhagavan comments, the Shastras are not for the jnani. He has no doubts to be cleared. The riddles are for ajnanis only. The Shastras are for them alone. It's a great blessing that such Shastras exist. or the guidance of those seeking liberation. But however great their descriptions are, the yani abides in that which is beyond all. Unshaken knowledge will be found in the existence of the self alone. Cannot be book knowledge. Only for the Ajnani does the realization of the truth seem like a riddle or a mystery? For the jnani, it is self-evident and irrefutable. The disciple did not, however, clarify his position and actually inquire. So he says, sleep is the state of nescience, 
and so it is said of samadhi also. This idea that sleep is a state of nescience is a notion formulated in the waking state. Did he say that he was in a state of nescience when in sleep? When he was asleep, he said no such thing. And then he had added, so it is said of samadhi also. Evidently, whoever made that statement was not in samadhi when they made it. In samadhi, there's no such idea of a state of nescience. So Bhagavan clarifies with finality. Jnana, knowledge, is beyond knowledge and nescience. There can be no questions about that state. It is the self. The self is jnana. It is beyond the ignorant ideas of knowledge and nescience. There is no duality in that. And so there can be no questions about that. Now perhaps regarded as a state, in the end, upon profound inquiry, it is found to be only a self. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramana. Oh, Shanti. Shanti.